if the organization is working smoothly now, it's a credit to the people who are running it now, but it's that their success was made possible by a foundation. Cable access television. As important as it brings information about local government to its viewers, the foundation of home TV was set up to make it successful for years to come. This program looks at the history behind the silver lining of success, behind the over 160 awards, the history of home TV. 25 years of laying the foundation and guiding the formation of success. In the overall excellence category this year, we won first place in the nation, and we got this award, which is uh, the epitome of the statement that beauty is in the eye of the beholder because it's a mirror. <laughs> Awards don't come easily. It's not what the history truly is about. And to understand what has been laid before the future and success of home TV, you must understand the foundation. The silver lining of success for home TV began 25 years ago. first was hired we had to get the meetings covered and that's all anybody cared about and I had I actually had not been part of the meeting coverage as an intern I actually opted out of that and was allowed to opt out of it I was allowed to be a daytime only intern chair of the commission Erling J Jorgensen led the signing of the first franchise agreement between the National Cable Company and Meridian Township Erling also helped lead the negotiation for the second franchise agreement with United Cable in 1987, helping to pave the way for successor chairs on the Cable Commission. He could see the vision of what public educational and access channels could do for the community. But Bud Brokaw, Erling Jorgensen, at times Bob Homan, and these people behind the scenes uh, made it possible for me to succeed. And then what I try to do in the organization is make it possible for the interns to succeed. And then they made everything happen. Erling Jorgensen and Ben are the two, okay? I mean, they, they were the structure. And it was kind of like Erling, the big thinker, and Ben, the little thinker. Not negatively, but he took care of the day-to-day -day operations. If you don't know anything about the foundation, of a house and you could walk in and go, hey, what? maybe you don't need those three bricks. Maybe you don't need those pipes. Maybe you don't need two dozen nails right there. Because to me, the person who doesn't know what they're doing, they would say, hey, it doesn't look to me like you need it. Maybe you could do without it. But the builder would say, no, nope, we need that. If you don't have that there now, you're going to have problems later. So this whole process for years in building the foundation of this organization was keyed by repeatedly having support for the bricks, the pipes, and the nails, and the wood that it was necessary, metaphorically, to put the organization together. I would say that the structure was put together and our job was to make sure that nobody tore it apart. Because there have been times in which, you know, people would have torn things apart. We have put together uh, what the Cable Commission believes uh, is in the best interest of the community as far as the cable franchise. That proposal is in the hands of the cable company. They are looking at it and we are about to begin negotiations and to see how we will come out. You know every day you walk in the studio, you look at the sign, the plaque on the door, and it says it's Studio J and says the reason why. Jorgensen's retirement led the Cable Commission to have the opportunity to restructure the channel. It was decided to create a full-time position in the hopes of having a more professional cable channel. In the interim period, Ben Stark and another cable intern served as cable coordinators. I was actually here while the job was posted, while applications were being accepted, and while interviews were being conducted. Bud Brokaw gave me a call because Bud remembered me from the, from the nine months or so that I was an intern here, and he invited me to apply. Immediately, Ben Stark worked through the clutter of mess left for him when he first came aboard, and he and his crew recorded every minute of it change. What is change? 
According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the world's best-selling dictionary, changes to make or become different. In some sense, the energy for change came from the uh, uh, unwillingness to accept what was here as good enough. I had to make it better. It had to be better. It just couldn't stay the same. I would not have been able to deal with it. Of course, equipment alone does not make a station run. It takes talented and inspired individuals using equipment in a certain way so as to create quality productions. The growing programming and internship programs developed hand in hand at a rapid pace. One of Ben's first orders of business was the reorganization of the internship program. If you think you could fit into the intensive, competitive learning atmosphere here at Channel 22, we invite you to stay for the question and answer session and then fill out an application. Probably about half our interns were non-credited interns. Remember, it's a lot of work and a lot of fun. <laughs> but again, it was some kind of groundbreaking theory at the time, and I, I don't know what other people thought, but I think they thought I was crazy <laughs> because they're like, hey, you're risking, that's a risk. Well, you're risking something. And I may, I'd be like, what are we risking? If they don't work out, we can cut them loose. If they don't like it, they can leave. So we were offering an opportunity here where you could uh, have an internship with production equipment and professional setting, uh, and you didn't have to spend money for the credit or allocate credit uh, values that you wanted to you know, take other classes or something like that. Anything you see me doing is something that you could possibly be doing if you can develop the talents and prove to me that you're capable of doing it. I wanted to be Bob Costas. I wanted to be Al Michaels. Um, so when I went to home TV, it was, I am going to be the next generation play-by-play -play guy for one of the networks, or at the very least, a local sportscaster that was all about sports, sports, sports. So um, Ben was more than happy to bring me in and turn me loose on uh, high school football, high school basketball, and MSU sports for Meridian Magazine. There was a yellow sheet of paper up on the wall, and it said TV internships, you know, with the phone number, and get experience, and da-da-da-da, whatever it was going down the whole list of possible job opportunities. I was like, that seemed kind of cheesy, but I figured, you know what, I've got no experience right now. I need to get some experience. I don't know wh what I'm doing. So it, my logic has always been it can't hurt to make a phone call and just check it out and see what's going on. I think in a field like telecommunications that is so competitive, if you don't have an internship, you're probably doomed at the start. The people we're looking for have several characteristics in common. We're looking for people who are mature, confident, disciplined adults. It's unusual here, I think, um, that a person could put in an average effort and get a superior result. I think the system is tuned up pretty clearly that you have to put in an above average effort in order to get an above average result. I think that's a fair system. I wanted to get in and like do stuff and actually make some television because that's kind of what I, that's what I wanted to do. And uh, the home TV experience, just like you just start out and you're on your own, you're given responsibility, accountability, and, 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 and some, a great learning environment, you know, people you can learn from there. People teaching people. And I think educationally, um, there's an impression, uh, there's an image that the teacher speaks, you know, the students listen, it's kind of like, you know, you open up your brain and pour it all in. And, but that's one way. It got kind of frustrating because you always had to read, Ben always had us read, you have to read the entire manual before you can operate the equipment. And you read any of those manuals and it's like, you know, this doesn't make any sense to me. It's only hands-on stuff. So once we, once we did that and got to do the hands-on stuff, that was cool. If you can get people to learn on their own, then that's the best form. And then, but secondly, is learning from peers. We went to this walkthrough. Michael Dukakis was in this plant or something in Lansing. I'm with the press corps walking around trying to look like I knew absolutely what I was doing and had no clue. And Jan is telling me, she's running the camera and she's telling me what to do and go do this. And I asked a question during his press conference. I have no idea what came out of my mouth. I have no idea what I asked. It was something about education, but it was a question and Jan probably fed the question to me because I was so out of my mind. And he answered it, and then we came back to the station, and we edited together a story, and I thought that I was just the coolest. Curiosity is a great motivator for education. So learning on your own, and then learning with peers, because there's no power issues, there's no fear and anxiety, it's just sharing with peers. You create professional expectations, you create a professional setting, and then you try and give people the opportunity to succeed.
It's the internship staff that has produced these, as I said, and without the interns here, we would not be doing what we are doing. It's what I had to do to, to pay the bills. Hi, I'm John Pompeo, and I ask that you sit back and relax while I take you through the changes that we've undergone here at Channel 22. But at the time, I was like, all right, you know what? It's something, using the music. <laughs> That's where you start the creative process, and by thinking to use the music ch ch changes and learning, trying to learn to edit on the beat. And something as silly as when you know showing a bunch of the different equipment, trying to get some clear surface or clean surface to shoot on. It's like okay, I want to show all this stuff at one time. How do you do it? And that's the first time I ever thought about laying it out. It's one of those crazy things, but it's certainly something that I did learn from. I mean, I still do that same sort of thing for stories I do today. Nobody really told me what to do because nobody knew what to do. Hello, I am Mr. Plant from Venus. Your world is now under our command. You know, we hit the ground running and I was very eager to get it going. And here he is, your favorite and mine, Walter Funkite. Thank you very much and good evening, everybody. Well, Meridian Township residents are up in arms over a recently enacted tax reduction. Many residents say taxes in Meridian Township are too low already. Following the all news formats of uh, radio stations um, and the CNN network, uh, so I, you know, I just looked and said, well, let's do that locally. Basically, let's do that locally. Um, can we do it? How do we do it? I don't know. Let's do it. But the best program at home TV is Meridian Magazine. This weekly series began in 1985, and since then, more than 200 programs have been produced. Meridian Magazine is the news and information show focusing on this suburban community of 36,000. That really was the first major show that I started on a regular basis. A magazine show gives you maximum flexibility. It's also, it can be a demanding show if you're going to do it at a high level of quality, but it's just, you can do it anything. It's like stew, you know, or you can put anything into it. Hi, and welcome to Meridian Magazine. I'm your host, Ben Stark. Today, we have three special features for you. We'll be hearing from Meridian Township Police Sergeant Carl Gallagher. He'll give us some tips on holiday shopping. Sergeant Gallagher will let you know how to avoid getting ripped off this holiday shopping season. You know, we were so uh, interested in having local programming without any real clear way to do it. Meridian Magazine began airing regularly on the channel. Other programs shortly followed becoming series programming for years to come. This is Hetty Gabler for Home TV Channel 22 and I want to talk to you about a program called uh, Meridian Live. Well, I should hope so. This township is alive and well. The post meeting report, Meridian Magazine interview and really that would have kept us plenty busy through the whole first year but I, I think that the Who's Who program slipped in somewhere in that uh, end of the first year. There were no guidelines, and uh, there are two examples I'll give you of how we came up with programming in those early years. One of which is uh, more straightforward, and that is that the uh, township clerk simply approached me and said she wanted to have a talk show. Hello, my name is Virginia White. Welcome to Who's Who, a program featuring outstanding and interesting citizens and their causes. At that time, hey, we're looking for things to do. So we said, yeah, let's do it. All right, that's fine. You want to host a talk show? Let's do a talk show. In your 15 years as Secretary of State, have you ever acted in the capacity of Governor Pro Tem? Oh, yes, I have served as Governor several times, but I must tell you about the very first time. We came up with a, a body of programming, that some of which, as you know, in the case of Meridian Magazine or the Post Meeting Report, which is now called Postscript, I believe still, um, you know, have lasted for a long, long time, and others have gone by the wayside, and that's okay. We're here at Channel 22 today to talk about the new Channel 22 program, The Hands Go to Hollywood, with your host, Amy Hand. She produces, she directs. We threw a lot into Cable Watch 88, and uh, we collaborated, and we had, we had all of our people, plus all of a bunch of other people, and it was a great experience. Uh, I don't think I ate uh, food for eight hours or something. Here in Ingham County, George Bush is apparently going to be a winner over Michael Dukakis by a slim margin, about 53 to 47. You know, that's not a normal work day. That's not a, not a normal person who would make that work day for themselves either. The Headley override is being defeated soundly right now in Meridian Township with half the precincts reporting. And we covered like 25 or 30 races and we just 
made it up and did it. And now for our first live interview, we go to Studio B and Jan Thornburg. Ted, how does it feel to maybe be a trustee once again? There's no doubt in my mind that home TV probably has one of the, if not the most extensive election coverage for a government access channel. Interns kept saying, why don't we have call letters? You know, everybody else has call letters. Why don't we have call letters? Well, okay. So it wasn't that big a deal to me, but uh, somewhere at the end of the second year, I believe it was the summer of 86, I started to say, okay, well, then let's get serious about some call letters. I was very close to going with WMTC. WMTC, Meridian Township Cable. Nobody was coming up with an idea that was better than that. The funny thing was that a lot of the interns on the staff were suggesting a totally different uh, set of call letters, and they all kind of came around the theme of um, Benny and the Jets, because I'm Benny and they're the Jets. There was a big strong movement to name the, the station WBNJ, <laughs> Benny and the Jets. And uh, I just would listen to them make that suggestion and think, yeah, that's why you're in college. <laughs> I mean, that's cute. Thank you. I sure will consider that, Benny and the Jets. One of, the, uh, one of our interns uh, at the time, who's been very successful in his career for 20 years, had a totally different suggestion. The suggestion was WHOM, with the concept of Hazlitt, Okemos, and Meridian, which is the whole concept, you know, within the name that we've, uh, we have. But the only problem was, I mean, WHOM is, the, is a word. The word is whom, like whom, whom. But I was familiar with another cable TV station uh, in Ohio that had an unusual uh, hyphenated uh, name and so I went with that uh, concept and so we, we just switched around and said home TV because you, you, you eliminate the dumb word or the meaningless word of whom that would just be a plague uh, you retain the meanings of H O and M uh, but you also create the sense of home or local it was John Pompeo who came forward with W H O M so uh, even though that's not the name that we selected it was the combination of letters that we settled on. And so uh, I credit John Pompeo because credit where credit is due. There are people currently in this building who have worked a long time, and that's fine. Just that I wasn't going to, but nobody really knew that. So, because you don't take a job and you shouldn't tell them, well, I'll be leaving in two years. But I believed I was going to leave in two years. When I took the job, I assumed it was for two years. And that's kind of laughable because it turned out to be 13 years. Ben laid a fantastic groundwork for whoever took over the reins from there. After 13 years of being the cable television coordinator and station manager, the groundwork was uh, laid so strong in terms of funding for the channel, perspectives and visions for the channel, the policies for the channel, the facility and equipment for the channel were in good shape. So when you ask what was it like to uh, hand over the job to Matt Schuster, I recommended him for the job. I strongly said, he's your guy. You, you should hire him. With Ben's firm support and confidence in my abilities, it, it gave me the confidence in taking over and taking that next step. I wanted to make sure he was going to apply for the job. I might not have left if he said he wasn't going to apply for the job. The visions I had for the station were really to take it to the next level. I, I felt that we had a good basis of programming. It was time to add some more diversity to the programming and take the production values maybe up to the next notch. I'm totally satisfied and appreciative with what he did for three years here that he was in charge. That there's no question that Matt Schuster raised the level of the operation continued the success, increased the success, improved operations in ways that I probably couldn't have done even in three years. I would have preferred that Matt didn't leave when he did. Uh, if he'd asked me in the, you know, conceptually, did I ever want him to leave? No, I would have had him stay forever. I applied to Home TV in the summer of 2001, uh, and I was actually hired on September 11th. Obviously, it was a day that I remember. When I started, my main focus was the franchise renewal process. It took a lot of time in that I wasn't able to produce programs. Now 
that the franchise agreement is done. Now that time is I can use for for other things. I can use them for actually producing. I can tune in when I'm on this side of town and and uh, watch a little bit and I'm always happy with what I see. Home TV has three full-time staff, one part-time staff, about 10 freelancers and paid interns, and about 30 unpaid interns. What's the next step? Okay, and in my view, there's something about what we're doing in the internet. I mean, you can't continue to operate a cable TV operation without realizing that the internet is what's driving communication today. The importance is for us to get information out to the public. You know, we want to get as much information about the township out to the residents. And we want to get the public meetings out to the residents. Not everyone can come to the meetings. So if they can go to the web and view that meeting, you know, they will be much more involved in their government and know what's going on. I like the fact that we've grown in the last five years that I've been here. I think we'll continue to grow. Um, I think we've got new ideas. We're constantly coming up with new ways to make our programming better, uh, new ways to train our interns that's better, and I, I'd like to think that will continue in the next five years. I think that, um, that with all of our different abilities that we have, um, Brian's really good shooter. He loves showing people how to shoot and training the students and working with them on improving their skills. He really enjoys that. Um, Lynn is really good with graphics and software and um, integrating that with all of the programs. And um, so I think with, with those two skills and then with the skills that I bring, I think that all three of us uh, make for you know really well-rounded um, staff here at Home TV. It's not a small thing, you know. 25 years is not a small thing. The world of Home TV continues to grow, and the communities of Hazard and Okemos, which make up Meridian Township, have begun to realize there's no place like Home TV.